Let's start. Mom, there's a letter from the principal office. Miss Mason read the letter several times and studied it thoughtfully for a while. Attention class. Everyone back to their seat. I have a letter from Wanda's father that I want to read to you. Dear teacher, my Wanda will not come to your school anymore. Jack also. Now we move out to a big city. No more Holler Pollock. No more S.Y. Funny Name. Many funny names in the big city. Yours truly, Jan Petronsky. I am sure that none of the boys and girls in room 13 would purposely and deliberately hurt anyone's feelings, because his or her name happened to be a long unfamiliar one. I prefer to think what was said was said in thoughtfulness. I know you feel the way I do, that this is a very unfortunate thing to have happened. Unfortunate and sad. And I want you all to think about it. The first period was a study period. Maddie tried to prepare her lessons, but she could not focus. It was right that she never made fun of Wanda, but she never stopped Peggy to tease Wanda. It was just mad is what Peggy has done. Worse. I must do something to something. I have to find Wanda. Maybe she had not moved away yet. Maybe Peggy would come with me to Bogan's Heights. We will tell her that she has won the contest. And all the dresses were smart and beautiful. When school was dismissed in afternoon. Hey. Let's go and see if that kid has left town or not. Let's see. The two girls hurried out, up the street towards Bogan's Heights. Girls hurried on. They wanted to reach before dark. I think that's where the Padronskis live. Yeah. The house looks shabby. But clean. It reminded me her faded blue dress, shabby but clean. There was no sign of life about the house. Peggy knocked the door but there was no answer. They both went to backyard and knocked there. Still there was no answer. The Peronskis were gone. Well, anyway. She's gone now. So what can we do? Besides, when I was asking her about dresses, she was probably getting good ideas for her drawings. She might not even have one. Otherwise, I can't sleep. Wanda's face is pasted in my mind. I am never going to stand by and say nothing again. If I ever hear anybody picking on someone, because they are funny looking or because they have strange names, I will speak up. I can't sorry Wanda, but can stop another girl. It was just a friendly letter telling about the contest, and telling Wanda she had won. And they had meant to say they were sorry and her drawings were brilliant. Days passed but there was no answer. Maybe Wanda may be so hurt that she is not going to answer. Weeks went by. Peggy had begun to forget the whole thing. But Maddie couldn't forget. It was Christmas time. On the last day of school before holidays, it happened that. How mad I am. I am narrating the whole story, knowing I can show it to you. Let's see. You remember Wanda Petronsky, the gifted little artist who won the drawing contest? Well, she has written me, and I am glad to know where she lives. I want to read the letter to you. Dear Miss Mason, how are you in room 13? Please tell the girls they can keep those hundred dresses. Because in my new house, I have a hundred new ones, all lined up in my closet. I would like the girl Peggy to have the drawing of the green dress. And Maddie to have the blue one. I miss that school, and my teacher doesn't equalize you. Merry Christmas to all. Yours truly, Wanda Petronsky. On the way home. Maddie and Peggy held their drawings very carefully. Boy. This shows she really liked us. It shows she got our letter and this is her way of saying that everything is all right. And that's that. I hope so.
Maddie went home and pinned her drawing over a torn place in the bedroom. The Sheppy room came alive from the brilliancy of the colors. The face of this drawing looks exactly like me. Wanda had really drawn it for me. She excitedly ran over to Peggy's house. Peg. Let me see your picture. What's the matter? Look. She drew you. That's you. What did I say? She must have really liked this anyway. Yes, she must have. Now, let's answer some questions about the chapter. Where did Wanda live? Wanda lived at a place called Bogan's Heights. The place was away from social amenities, like sanitation. The road was muddy. Thus, Wanda's feet were always caked with mud. Where did she sit in the class, and why? She always sat at the last bench at the corner. Because, she didn't want to mix up with others. She was introvert. Whose letter came to the teacher first? And what does it say? The letter came, was of Wanda's father. He had written, that Wanda will not come to school anymore, because they have moved to a big city. There, no one will consider her backward, because of funny name, or pale dress. Did Peggy and Maddie's letter to Wanda get a reply? Yes. Yes, it's right that reply didn't came for a number of days. But on the last day before Christmas, Miss Mason got her letter. The reply was, that she has gifted all the 100 dresses to the class. Because she had drawn 100 new dresses. She wished Merry Christmas to all. She gifted two particular pictures, to Maddie and Peggy. How does Peggy says, that Wanda loved both of them, in spite of being teased by them? Peggy says, Wanda had gifted two drawings to them. Also, the faces of drawings also looked like their own faces. So, according to Peggy, an artist can make someone's face only when, the person is in his heart. Thus she excuses, that Wanda loves them. I can't ask you questions anymore. Questions are there in the book, try to answer them yourself. If you didn't know the answer of a question, then it may be because you have not watched the video of part 1. If it's true, then please watch the video too. Also, please like and share this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please.